Hi everyone, it's Heidi from flutterbyheidi.co.uk. I'm Heidi Smith, I'm an independent stamina demonstrator based in the United Kingdom. And today I'm working with the lovely Sentimental Swirls, which is a new stamp set from the catalogue. And this is the one that was uh, designed uh, with Sam Hammond Donald, who's my upline poodles. Um, and as part of her team, we have all joined in with a blog hop to celebrate this lovely stamp set, to celebrate selling a million dollars of product how about that for a fantastic sales achievement um, and I haven't done one of these for a while and this is a Ferrero project so um, yeah so I'm that's I'm making a little Ferrero project and I'm using sunshine and rainbows so this paper is one of the free products in celebration um, and it is obviously designed to coordinate with the rainbows bundle in the new mini catalogue but there are such lovely patterns you could use it for all occasions some fabulous clouds you've got stripes lovely bright colours real sort of bright and rainbow feel to it um, you can see that's the little dot pattern I've used bolder stripes on the reverse narrower stripes more rainbows I've used this um, paper as well really lovely one soft sea foam so colors loads of colors so bermuda bay flirty flamingo granny apple green um, magenta madness mango melody uh, petal pink pool party soft sea foam and so saffron so and as i say you know you could have lots of fun with those really useful and it comes for free 12 sheets so you get four sheets of each of the patterns um, so yeah, and it's six by six paper. I should, as you can, as you can see. So, um, the great thing about this stamp set is that it coordinates with a couple of punches that we already have in the catalogue. So it, it's flowers and leaves, which is this one here. So this flower coordinates with the smaller flower on here. This little leaf coordinates with the leaf on here, and then the other flower coordinates with our strawberry builder punch. You can see in here. Um, yeah, and this, I think this leaf, I haven't actually, I haven't had a chance to play fully with it, but I'm guessing that this one, yeah, I think that's going to be a pretty good match for our Strawberry Builder one as well. So let's just have a quick look. Look at that. Oh, not quite, no. Okay, it doesn't, but this is a fabulous stamp set for some, um, some great projects. Look, sweet little bird, but lots of fun. Um, lots of stuff that it coordinates with i'm just using the flower on here um, i've used what some in color dots um, which i've now misplaced um, just to go in the center but you could use any kind of diamante rhinestone um, in there and in fact i might even get around to using some new ones uh, that we have or a uh, color an ordinary one whichever so the project really easy it's a little crisscross box so you can see the sides here crossover just size to fit a Ferrero I've wrapped the DSP around there so that means when it closes it holds closed really well so a bit of fun diagonal closure box um, we'll start off by doing our stamping so I've got the larger flower on two blocks so we've got an outline and an infill and the same with the leaves and I thought I'd use this paper here which is the flirty flamingo you could use any color um, obviously that takes your fancy so I'm going to do the outline now this is where I kind of just orientate myself so it's going to go in sideways so I'm just going to pop a couple of those on there like so now for the infill you're not going to want to do it at full strength because you want to get a slightly lighter shade. So just stamp off and then line that up. I'm just using, as you can see, just a scrap. And it doesn't matter which way around that goes. I haven't quite lined it up. It doesn't matter. Um, do the same for our little leaves. Not in pe petal pink, obviously. That would be a little bit weird. Although that being said, um, you do get rare plants with um, with pink leaves. Uh, Celian, I can't remember. My husband used to have one years ago. <sighs> it's not so, no. That, that, that that's a, a a fish that's uh, now extinct. But anyway, there is there is a there is one um, that. Uh, 
coordinates. So I'm just doing these in a long line. This is just a scrap that I happen to have of, uh, it's probably a little bit wider than you actually need. Um, I'm stamping Granny Apple Green. And with those nice broad outlines, you can just have a look through that stamp and you get those images. I haven't done my measuring on these to kind of say what size card to use, but obviously you could use, um, and I'm guessing probably about a centimetre wide, probably, and then just line that up on the inside, like so. So we get three little leaves, pop my flower in, and the reason I space my flower out is because you're going to get a bit of um, of a leaf uh, cutting, so just two of those. So, and that's all of that done. So we've got two flowers and two leaves. And then it, this uses really minimal supplies. So while, we're, while we've got this um, here, just use your ball tool or you can use the actual end with the um, with, with the lid on, and I'm just going to use having sort of pushed the centre in. I'm just going to bend those flowers back to make them a little more realistic, like so. There we go. And let's uh, grab a little bit of wet glue, and then because I have misplaced where I've put my do you know what? I'm going to use up one of these. These are some pearls that we had um, to go with the hydrangea suite. So I'm actually going to use those. I'm just going to layer up two flowers and then I'm going to put one of these pearls in the middle there and just push that along with a take your pick and pop that in there and you see that even though that's a different shade, because these are these were Blushing Bride um, in this, obviously it works really well with the Flirty Flamingo. So I'm going to pop those little bits to one side. It's all my stamping done. But what you do want now is to do some scoring. So, you need a piece of cardstock, really small, or really small. It's 10 and a half by 17 and a half centimetres. So that's four and one eighth by six and seven eighths. And the scoring is super easy. You're going to score on the short edge at three and a half and at seven, which is um, one and three eighths by two and three quarters. And then you're going to score on the long edge at three and a half, at seven, at ten and a half, and at fourteen. The DSP that you need is um, ten and a half by seven centimetres, and you're going to score that down the middle, just gently. It's only DSP at um, three and a half, one and three eighths. Oh, I didn't give you the measurements on the long edge. I don't think in inches. So that's one and three eighths, two and three quarters, four and one eighths, and five and a half. Uh, so on this one, your size. Um, is four and one eighth by two and three quarters. You're scoring at one and three eighths, and then on the long edge in centimeters, it's three and a half and seven, and so in inches that's one and three eighths and two and three quarters. That's all we need to do. You're going to want your um, your snips, and you're going to come and cut. either on, on the long edge we're going to cut away those two squares now obviously um, you can keep those from the project you could use those elsewhere if you wanted to but that's your piece of DSP and then this is card so we just want to reinforce this before we do some cutting. 
Now you might want to draw the lines in for this to do your cutting um, with a pencil if you want to. Um, so you are going to cut across here. And I say this is probably the easy way. You need to probably do it because it's mirrored on one side. So you're going to cut like this sort of zigzag and then on this end one you're going to cut across in this direction and down. Okay. So I would say draw that on the one edge and then you're going to do it in the opposite direction on the other. Now if I was doing a larger one I would certainly mark it out with pencil um, on both, but because this is obviously it's um, it's only small, you could pretty much do it in a single cut of your snips. That's me forgetting to silence my phone before I started filming. So if there's binging in the background, I'll apologise now. Always good fun trying to film when I've got family in the house as well. And cats. Well, I did lose my dog earlier this year, so not don't have him coming to interrupt anymore, sadly. Okay, so we're almost there now. It looks like I need to clean the tips of my snips. Going to get a different pair, those are feeling a little bit gluey. Oh, that's better. Already nice and clean. So there we go. So you're going to end up with a piece like this. You then want to cut those vertical lines up the centre there. on both sides again so having got to this stage now you want to add your DSP to the end and you want it to go on this end here and I would recommend I use a bit of wet glue because we've scored it already you want glue all over these two sections but you only want it on the inner triangle of those initially. So just pop that on and line it up. So, and while it's still wet, just manoeuvre that so that it's nice and secure in our position. Then on this end here, you're just going to cut across diagonal as it happens. So oh, look, I've got diagonal lines on this one, which made it easier. And I'm just going to run a little glue on that piece of DSP. And just fold that over. And if you get any excess glue, just take that off with this, one of those scraps of cards that you had and just push that in place. So again, the same on the other side. Just use your fingers to roll that over on the edge. Like so. And that actually, so you'd be surprised how firm that makes that top bit. So this is our lid end, this is our base end. So this is going to adhere like so. Now if you, what I should have done, in fact what I did on this one I think, yes I actually put it over both layers. So you can always glue it, you can do it before or afterwards, up to you entirely. Probably better to do it um, to glue it into shape and then trim it over. So I'm just going to cut a sliver off there just to make sure 
but I don't get anything. Right. So just pop a bit of glue on this tab and on the inside of this tab and that is going to create our lid section. Nice and square on the back there. It just takes a moment with Tombow just to, to grab, make that bond. Okay, so that's our lid end and this end, the opposite end, what we want to end up with is with this piece on the outside. So this is going to go inside. This end one is going to stick to the inside of the tab to make our crisscross. Those next ones are then going to go on the inside as well. So that when it closes up you've got that nice diagonal. So do the first one. We're going to go just on that bottom corner because we don't want glue everywhere. That's going to stick there. See? And the same on the other side. And by keeping all those nice and straight you can just hold those in place. These next two tabs, or this next tab, you want glue all over it because it's going on the inside, like so. And like so. And that just then neatens that, it reinforces it. So when you close it, you get a nice flush fitting little box that you can then add your direct decoration to. Add a couple of little leaves, just a little, little glue on the end there. If you get any glue, just pop them in with a fine tip glue just press that in like so. Just hold on to that. And you can just add a little leaf to the opposite edge. And there we have our pair of pretty little Sentimental Swirls Ferrero Rocher boxes. Thanks for watching. Come back and see me again soon. If you'd like to purchase any of the products you've seen today, just pop along to my shop at HeidiSmith.StampinUp.net or use the links below in the description bar of this video to um, take you straight to my shop where you can purchase the full range of Stampin' Up! products. Thanks for watching. Bye.